Hey, my name is Zash and Karate Telekutla. In this video, we will talk about how we can work with this composite service from the IDD application that we have and generate uh, IDD CBOCS configuration files. And where we can verify those, uh, if the files are properly generated or not. Uh, from from the database side from the uh, url link that we have and uh, we'll see that you know we'll write a eclipse program uh, from there how we can generate a java objects in order to you <clears throat> push the data to mdm and we'll see that how the api is going to generate from the java objects itself this is the schema i'm going to use for this demo this is the hma hmb and abhm this is this is the three base objects that i do have I'm going to use this even my IDD application also. Let me go to the IDD application. So here, I already created an IDD application. This application, you can see that <coughs> it contains uh, uh, A and B. So th this is the part of relationship, but you know, I'm not covering the child, uh, how we can populate the data to child, but I will cover how we can pass the data from the uh, Java objects. What you need to do is once you created a uh, IDD application, you need to save it and validate the generate business entity schema. Once we generate the business entity schema, what will happen is your table will populate. This uh, table will populate the corresponding records for you. You see that all the config types and config data is available in this table. So uh, at this point, you don't need to modify anything unless you, you need some customization. Once the files are ready, that means that we are good to go uh, with the Java application that we can design. <clears throat> so at this point, I have a sample example. I will share it to you or you can see this uh, samples. Uh, I will try to attach to the KB article and you can see from there. All right, so here, I have a sample application. The, there are two files. This is uh, build.xml and might properties. These two, I brought it from resource kit. The, the resource kit, uh, the location is, this is the location in FireMDM hub resource kit sample COS. This is the place that where you can get a copy of this, my properties, and uh, you can use um, build.xml. This is the kind of generic one. If you look at the uh, uh, configuration is a pretty easy to understand if you are background understanding background of uh, ant script <coughs> so at this moment uh, so when you have this application with the only that uh, you, you won't see this all these files so I'm trying to do uh, remove it later I can generate again let me refresh this in order to go this other What I'm trying to show is these all files are generated based on my ant script. That is the reason, you know, I can generate the, the, them again. <coughs> all right. So let us assume that this class is also not there. But initially, when you have a project, you will have only these two files. So from the build.xml, you see that uh, run generated, run dynamic, all these out uh, um, targets. So uh, you can use generate one. This is the generate one. The generate one, what exactly it will happen is it talks to the uh, Fomport service client and generate the classes for you. Let, let us generate right now. Once the classes are generated, just to refresh this uh, project so based on, once you refresh you see that a lot many files are created so if you look at uh, you can concentrate on this guy cs underscore ors this is the place that where you have a api api for uh, passing the values to the mdm based on the idd subject area you have 
So if you if you look at this API, this follows exactly the structure that you have from IDD application. Let us uh, see like your uh, right right uh, HMA. See, uh, this is exactly same like uh, when you have open a subject area from the IDD application. So it tries to pull up uh, uh, in the data view. You see that what are the columns that are there in the subject area. It asks you to populate or to fill that value. So the same like we have an API over here. This API is capable of filling those objects and sending it to the NVM. You see that this kind of, this is a this is a generic uh, API. This uh, API this kind of pattern will follow for uh, any kind of sub subject area application. So here, so for uh, any subject area, there are parameters. In the parameters, you can pass like at the root level, you can pass like you know. Uh, effective dates and the set record state. Suppose say you would like to create the record in pending state. What you need to do is you need to pass the record state over here. I mean, I'll tell you how, how you're going to use this API, but you know, you can see that what um, fields are accommodated as part of the parameter subject over here. This happens for every uh, BO. Every BO is comes with the parameters uh, object. Okay, so you can refer the sample one in order to this is a time to write application what you need to do is you can uh, refer the sample one which is there in the cos folder like if you go to source and uh, look at this you can refer the generated sdo generated sdo means uh, we already generated a class and we are trying to use this so here you can use this one you can use uh, you can um, you can use the same generated SVO for sample application uh, based on this only I created my application also ultimately there are, there are a couple of points that we need to discuss over here the thing is uh, so initially you need to do the initialization initialization for data factory helper contacts these are the thing because these are the couple of APIs which need to be uh, filled up uh, in order to communicate with the MDM, this API is going to be help us. So based on that API, we fill that uh, uh, prepare that bean object, bean object in terms of like uh, you have a parent bevo and child bevo. We'll fill the values and send it to the MDM uh, by using these uh, helper contacts and uh, uh, CBO client that we have. So I did a customization based on my compatibility. I prepared a separate init method. You can uh, do it whatever uh, the way you like. But ultimately, make sure that you have to use the data factory, those things in order to create the objects. So one more thing is uh, like uh, creating objects in Java, you use new. But here, you have to use the data factory. From the data factory, you have to create the object in order to uh, push the values to the bin. So here, you can refer the code later. So once you have written the code that we, um, you like, you just you just need to pass. You start uh, start with you know when you are writing a program, what you need to you need to start from right here, uh, writing a particular BO, and from there it will ask you that what are the values it populate uh, it's required to. Suppose say for example I can take a HMA, HMA will ask that setting a HMA object. So you need to create the object using data factory. Once that is a created object, to fill the parameters from the HMA. Like you know, it will show this link will show you that what are the parameters that you need to populate from here. So it is asking for a root, a root, uh, a root, a root contains the actual values. Root is always contains the actual values like a BO class already because mine is a HM really enabled object. Uh, you see that HMA column and this is the actual column that is there in the HMA root. So you can just follow the pattern. Over here, it allows you to pump the data, whatever required in the BO. So once you are done with that, make sure that you call this API. You call this API, the CO client dot process. This is going to be send the request to the MDM. Make sure that you know in order to process it. 
and one last thing is when you running the build.xml build.xml is going to be expected couple of uh, parameters from here i mean a couple of uh, properties file the properties file uh, which comes from my dot properties file you can populate these values for the my i mean uh, based on your uh, war as based on your password and username you need to change correct these values and try to um, run from here once you generate the cocs file you can see that you know the battle file visual file uh, that is available under uh, the cmx forward slash yes files this is a place that where you can see valid file battle file is the file which you know helps you in order to write uh, rest api related stuff and visual file this is uh, you know you can write your soap related I try to cover most of the points. If you have any questions, feel free to refer the KB articles or, or reach us uh, if you have any questions. Create a support case, we'll try to answer you. All right, thanks a lot and thanks for uh, listening to my video.